Welcome to Raw Radio. And we are live. <laughs> oh, wow. I know. That was a 1970s radio announcer. <laughs> See me down at the local car wash. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. Start hitting the sound effects on the mixer. It'll, it'll be like an old-timey radio show. Um, You know, we could. We uh, could. could we? Like, Should we? Like, could. Like we could this. do a lot. Yeah. <laughs> That's the one. Yeah, was Anyhow, yeah, we can do cool stuff right now. We try not to because trying to keep this professional. But maybe on takeaways, we can, we can, we can spin it up a little bit here. Uh, no. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, thankfully, I'm in charge of the mixer, yeah, so there, you go. there might be a random things popping up throughout the throughout the show. Um, the what are we talking about? Well, we just got done with Marilio Bustamante, um, and he's a legend in the sport of MMA and jujitsu. Uh, and we're talking about confidence today. Um, he's somebody that was always super calm. When he would step into, you know, on the mats, in a ring, in a cage, um, and for various reasons. But he was just one of those fighters. He even talked about um, he would look across the cage, and these guys were, like, bouncing off the walls. They looked like they wanted to kill me. And he was just like, I don't, we're just here for a fight. Um, and, it, you know, how do you get that to that level of confidence? Don't, don't ask me because I've never been in a cage. I have no desire to get into one. But I'll tell you this. Um, it kind of interesting links into, you know, my personal kind of, um, not kind of, my personal feelings about all of this. And I mentioned that during the actual episode with with Marilo, but um, it, it, he was one of the guys that I personally look up to as, as I was starting in Carson Gracie camp way back in 2000, you know, his name came up very frequently, not only you know, at the academy, but just in jiu-jitsu community. He was the guy. He was one of the guys who created jiu-jitsu. And today talking to him, it really gives me, I got to say, like the, the, the confidence boost. It's, it's so interesting to have this opportunity to talk to these individuals that two decades ago I was looking up to, mm-hmm. you know. Um, I think on the flip side, what is in a way – sad that a lot of people don't know who these guys are you know yeah. there's a lot of people in today's generation and i'm not talking about somebody who started jiu-jitsu last week i'm talking about blue belts purple belts you've been on the mat for year two five you know and and and, and somehow name like bustamante slips between the cracks you know and and i'm not sure how that happens is that you know, do you think before we get to the confidence thing, but do you think that maybe that is partially the instructor's responsibility to educate the students about the history of jujitsu? Or do you think this is just a nature of evolution and some of the more recent, let's just call them more recent guys, they more look up to to guys, you know, that compete or have a more recent impact yeah. on the culture of jiu-jitsu? Well, I think it's it's generational. I think that our generation, are, we're going to look up to the people that were, you know, 5, 10 years older than us, that were the professionals then, uh, and that happens over every generation, that, you know, the guys now that are, you know, 20, 30 years old are probably looking back at, you know, I mean, is Chuck Liddell even too old? Is Randy Couture even too old? You know? Who's that? Right, exactly. <laughs> well, they came after you. Um, you know, so it, it's a generational thing. You'll have your standouts, your legends, the guys that were bigger than life, right? But I think it's, it is it is a generation. Who, who is a 20-year-old's favorite musician, actor? It's the people. It's what they grew up with, right? And they pick the legends out of that. Is it an instructor's um, job to inform we, we should just change this to history or something uh but is it is it the instructor's job to inform his students i don't know i don't know if there's time for that in a class setting it's, you know the way classes are now maybe maybe in a in a private setting where you're like you know somebody's working on half guard and you're like oh i've got gordo you should go check out um check out this guy that was doing this 30 years ago who really developed it 
right? Or Tinguina, who you want to learn spider guard. This is the guy who really developed it. And a 20, 23 year old kid is going to be like, I've never heard of these people, Mm -hmm. right? It's a generational thing. Uh, And I think it crosses sports and entertainment and, you know, every, it, it, it's just, it, it is the way we live our lives, I think. Yeah, and you might be right on that. It just, I kind of feel, the, you know, unfortunate. You know, there's there's a factor of sadness behind this because these yeah. guys really impacted what we have today. Without these guys, you know, Gordo, Gurgel, Bustamante, Mario Sperry, I mean, you know, behind without these guys, we, we would not be where we are today, not zero. It would be different. I'm not saying it would be worse, but it would be definitely different. They shaped the sport and the art of jiu-jitsu to what it is today. Yeah, right? and I, yeah, for sure. And I think that people, as they get older, so that 23-year-old that we're talking about, when he's 33... You just pissed off a bunch of 23-year-olds. No, I didn't. No, I didn't. When he's 23, he's thinking about certain people, like I said, generational, who he grew up with. When he's 33, he'll probably look back a little bit further than that, right? Hopefully. Because Well, because his idols will now be reflecting on their idols, and so on and so forth. And you start going backwards. Um, you know, I I'm a, I used to be a huge film fan. I watched every movie that came out. Really? I didn't yeah, know that. A- absolutely. Wait a minute. Everything. Wait, wait a minute. Really? Yes. Like, and like every film. Let me finish my thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> yes, every film. And uh, I mean, but I, I would watch every every genre and I would go back. Um, you know, I would have friends that were like, why would I want to watch that? It's black and white. I'm like, what are you talking about? Who cares? It's a great story. It's great filmmaking. It's great for its time. And I think that, you know, you could say the same about jujitsu. Somebody might watch a match from, yeah, we're totally not talking about confidence. How many minutes are we in? No, listen, I, uh, seven, <laughs> only seven minutes. And, and a lot of it is, yeah, this is all pre-framing to the important but, topic. By the way, I love your confidence about the movies. Okay, so ah, here we go. Um, that's the worst segue I've ever heard. However, um, you know, so I lost everything. I just lost it all. Uh, but you go back and you start appreciating the things that came before you. So what I was saying about that person who's 23 now, when he's 33, he will appreciate those who came before his idols. If you watch a match from 1987, and you're a 20 year old kid, you're going to be like, oh, that looks really boring or it's so simple. There's nothing going on. The technique, I could beat that guy. Right. But guess what? Somebody who's just being born last week is going to look back at the guys that you're watching now and they're going to say the same thing. But as you get older, you start developing an appreciation for those things that came before you. You bring a good point. I mean, it it definitely, there's a generation factor behind this, you know, and well, and some of it, you know, we can bridge this into this confidence thing that we were talking about too, um, Marilio. Um, it it it's really built based on the experience that you have, mm-hmm. right? I mean, there's even you know he he his his claim his 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 thought on all of this was that he was he was confident once he stepped on the mat, but big factor for him was that he was very unconfident child. Yeah. Right. Everything has changed once this pivot point in jujitsu came in, mm-hmm. right? Um, wh- what's your view on the confidence? Uh, I think it's a. I, is it a habit or is it a mindset? Well, it's definitely a mindset, but how do you develop it? You know, I I see kids here on the mat that walk in on their first day of cl- kids a kids class and they jump right in and. And they get physical right away, and 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 they're having a good time. And then there's another kid that same age who won't even get on the mat, who sits on the, on his parents' lap and cries. Um, but why? Why? I, why but, one is less? I don't confident know. Than, well, why one is more confident, confident than, than the other? other? I don't know. I don't know if it's a nature or nurture thing. Like I said, I don't know if you're born with it or not. But I do know that that kid who's not very confident can over time overcome that and become a confident kid. I've seen it happen. I've seen the kid who it took three classes for them even to come on the mat and sit down with the other students before class. And that kid is now one of the best kids in the class. And he's a leader 
and he can help everyone and he takes initiative in the class to to be a leader um is that something that he learned over time is it something that develops differently for different people i don't know but i do think that it is something that if once you that when you're exposed to things enough and you put in some time and some effort you do become more confident about that particular thing so you might have somebody who can go into a cage with the confidence that they're going to beat whoever is put in front of them, but they can't get up on a stage and deliver a talk to 30 people. Oh, I know. You know, I can talk about that part, but before we get there, before I even, um, this is such an interesting thing right now where you just said that you can get in front of the, what did you say? You, you can, you can step into a cage and no, right. You can step into a cage and fight, but you cannot get in front of people and talk. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I can talk. I, I can tell you examples of how it feels for me where I, I'm terrified of public speaking, but yet I can be in front of class of hundred and, and I can teach. Right. Because it's, you're, it's you know why? Blowing. Because you're confident in your jujitsu and well, you're confident in your instruction. Now, if you had to get up in front of all those people and not know what's going to happen, would it be different? Well, I don't know. I've never been in that position because I don't get on the stage. So, <laughs> but I think this whole topic you talked about kids, it's so interesting because similar things unfold with adults. I mean, we have tons of examples here with adults who come into classes and their their behavior it's very subcon uh, it's very uh what I'm missing the word um um uh, insecure okay it's very insecure right but after a month or two or three there is the behavior change they 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 gain the confidence they are more sure of what they can and cannot do they know the limitations and so on so this is not only kids driven or or child driven i think right. i think there's a lot of examples with adults with this behavior change or this this um the confidence growth takes place in a very visible yeah. very visible way yeah and you can even flip that where they come in and they're going 100% Right. They're, oh, they're they trying humbled? to, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But why were they going a hundred percent? They had, they thought they had something to prove. Right. If you get somebody, well, if, that's not confidence. Is there? Well, no, I think that's an insecurity. Right. I've got to go in there and prove to them mm -hmm. that I'm a badass for being 40, or I've got to go in there and show them that I wrestled, you know, in high school or whatever. Um, or, you know, that go into LA fitness every night, or CrossFit or whatever is going to prove to them how, you know, how tough I am. Are you speaking about particular people right now? <laughs> There's a whole gambit. <laughs> I've seen a lot of people come through here. Uh, and but also what's interesting, what you just mentioned here, the confidence does not necessarily have to come with a visible action. Often confidence comes with silence. Yeah. Right. It can. Like it, it, I'm no, I know what There's, I'm capable of and I will yeah. not take any action based on these events because yeah. it just, we don't want to go there. This, this means trouble. Yeah. Uh, Roy Dean talked about the, the quiet confidence. Mm -hmm. Other people have talked about it as well. Mm -hmm. um, where you're self-assured and you have nothing, you have, you have nothing to prove. Mm -hmm. And where does that come from? That comes from confidence. I know who I am. I know where I am. Um, I know how to handle this situation. And I'm not talking about, you know, your jujitsu is so good that if something happens, you can, take care of it physically. I'm just talking about that. You know, your surroundings, you're comfortable in your own skin. And it, when things start happening that that could escalate, you can de-escalate it. Just be, you know, you don't have, you don't have to fly off the handle. You don't have to, um, prove to anyone, including yourself that, you know, you can be physical and control the situation that way. You just kind of let things play out and you make the right decisions to get yourself out of any particular situation. So why do you think we are so insecure? I don't know. I said earlier, I don't know if it's nature or nurture. I don't know if it's based on bad experiences, um, you know, being put down when you're young, um, failing and having nobody tell you that failure is okay. Get back up. Um, I don't. I don't know. I don't know where it comes from. Listen, if, it, you, if you're in psychology, I'm, I'm actually would love to hear from you on this topic. So, if you're listening to this, you have any experience about confidence and and the mental state, how it's being developed between different people, how it's being shaped in that in that direction, and then how we can change it to be more confident. 
I would love to hear from you. Message us on Instagram. Uh, drop us a message. And, you know, we might even bring you to the show to really talk about this. Because I think this is a huge topic when it comes to jiu-jitsu. Mm-hmm. You know, the jiu-jitsu definitely shapes oh, people into the more confident state. Yeah. But if we can understand how this unfolds and how it happens, that path could be much easier or shorter for different individuals. And then being an instructor, we can really help others to develop that, mm-hmm. you know, more efficiently. Yeah. I think it's one of the reasons why people seek out a martial art um, is to help them with self-confidence. It's one of the big things that people push when they talk about kids programs is self-confidence um, or confidence, I should say. And, um, you know, you have people too that they level out in whatever they do, whether it's their career, their education, because they're afraid to go any further. They're afraid of the unknown. They're not comfortable in the uncomfortable, right? And this this sport, this martial art, teaches you how to deal with that, I think, in a much better way than a lot of the other ones do. Um, and, uh, yeah, I would love to hear if there's other ways. If you know, Do you have to be smashed <laughs> constantly? Do you have to be submitted con- constantly to, to become confident? Um, or are there just, like, little daily things that you can work on you know, that can help somebody who, who is really afraid of life, afraid of trying new things, afraid of anything, you know, really stepping out of their, their bubble, their comfort zone. Yeah. All right. Well, let's wrap this up for today. All right. Um, you know, listen, if you didn't listen to, um, Bustamante or the episode with, with, uh, Master Bustamante, please do. Um, a lot of, a lot of golden nuggets in there, little, yeah. little, little gems that could really come powerful aside from his mind-blowing story ding ding oh, is there one on the mixer <laughs> we need bell. to put a ding ding on the mixer for mind-blowing yeah but um a, a lot of great stories don't miss that one and there's so much ahead that we have in a pocket so this is this show is going to only get better i hope so i don't know i'm not very confident <laughs> ah. all right peace later thank you for listening to raw radio If you enjoyed the show, don't forget to leave us a review and help us make the show even more amazing. For future episodes, check out our website and follow us on all major podcast platforms. Take care.